Hey guys, welcome to GameBad. Today we're bringing another video, and today we're going over part one of our Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Weapon Wishlist. So this is going to end up being probably a few different parts here. Hopefully I can get it into three different videos with this list. I have over 110 different weapons here, including the different conversions that I'm going to go through. We're going to spend a little bit of time on each and every weapon here. However, I won't go into excruciating detail here because we want to get through this list. But I will go through part one here today. Hopefully we'll be able to cover all of the assault rifles in today's video. Big shout out to Albin, part of our community. I'm gonna link his YouTube channel down below. He deserves credit. I will be using some of his images where he was able to get in and Photoshop a lot of uh, different wish list weapons here and conversions that I wish we had seen in Modern Warfare 1 that I would expect to hopefully see in Modern Warfare 2. So he did some great designs here for some of these weapons. So I will show them on screen when we get to those weapons across these three different videos. But again, Albin, part of the community here, I'll link his YouTube channel in the description for these videos down below. Big shout out for him and his work. Also, just to preface this, I will be going through this list. Obviously, there's a lot of weapons and we're going off the assumption here that really more is better. If we take examples of the amount of weapons we're gonna be adding here, just assault rifles alone, a lot of these you may make a point that argue that they're very similar weapons it'd be hard to balance them but if you look at one example here i'm just going to use off the top of my head is battlefield 4 if you look at that game with the lmgs there was the m249 saw and the german hk mg4 which essentially statistic wise all the stats of those weapons matched up a hundred percent one to one however one recoiled to the right and the other recoiled to the left so i think there's an argument to be made here that you can have weapons that are very similar and perform very similarly in the game with minor differences could be to recoil or maybe just uh if we're looking at a point system to how i would expect weapons to be chosen here in this game look at something like sandstorm a different point system for all these weapons going from a scale of maybe three points all the way up to six or seven points based on the weapon the amount of conversions it has and the attachments you're going to put into them so that's kind of where we're going to go here we're going to i'm theorizing that that's what we're going to be seeing so based off that that's where this wish list is coming from i really hope especially if we're looking at a long-term at least the two years of support for Modern Warfare 2 uh, and Warzone 2 with the Modern Warfare 2 weapons. There's a lot of opportunity to add weapons over a year, two years, or even longer with the amount of modern day weapons. Modern day combat games like Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 here give, I think, developers the best opportunity to add content. And if we're looking at it from a business perspective, Activision wants to make more money on bundles more seasons and i think they saw the failure or the lack of uh purchases for the seasons of the bundles with cold war and vanguard so i'm hoping they take advantage of modern warfare and allowing bundles and more seasons with all of these different weapons is only going to benefit them financially especially if this is as infinity wood states the last chapter in the modern warfare reboot so with all that said a lot to keep in mind there let's go ahead and jump into the video so first off again we're starting with assault rifles hopefully get through all of the assault rifles today in part one well, first off if you are enjoying the content you want to see a lot more coverage for modern warfare 2 as we get closer and when we get to there and we actually get the release of the game the weapon conversions go ahead and like the video and give a subscription to the channel if you're enjoying it and want to stay up to date on any information for the game as well as like i said when we do get our hands on the game the amount of conversions we're going to go through so with that being said all that out of the way First weapon, you know, if you've been following the channel for a while, you knew this one was coming. We need a modern AK. Now, this is, I have a few different ones lettered throughout this list, but I'm going to go ahead here and say the AK-103 would be the first weapon I would want on this list. Now, you can make an argument any of these different conversions we'll go over could be the primary, and you could swap out a conversion for any of these. So, really, we'll start with the AK-103, which, again, this is a modernized version of the AKM with that 90-degree gas block. The AK-100 series started re release in the very latter half of the 1990s. I believe it was 1998 or 99, right into the early 2000s, 2000, 2001, 2003. In that area, they would release different iterations for the AK-100 series. So we start with the 103. This is the one that fires the 762 by 39 millimeter. Again, this is essentially a more modernized version of the AKM. Now, with that, I would expect to see different attachments from Zeneco. In Modern Warfare, we saw different M-Lock handguards with the Spetsnaz handguard for the barrel attachment. But if you look at what the Russians use on their kits, they use Zeneco, which is essentially, think of 
any aftermarket third-party market uh, realtor for a lot of the AR-15 platform. Zeneco is really the primary one for Russia and the Russian Special Forces. They offer a variety of different handguards, dust covers, things like that to modernize the AK platform with these older AKs besides the AK-12. So if we look at the 103, we could get Zeneco, Zeneco handguards, buttstocks with a B-33, buttstock, different gas covers, again, all from Zeneco, which offer rail systems, Picatinis all over them, so they look nice, first off, aesthetically pleasing, and it, it looks more modern. When modern War, the original Modern Warfare 2019, we saw an, a very old uh, original AK-47 uh, from from 1947, those those milled receivers. So very old version of the AK-47. It's time, hopefully, Modern Warfare gives us a modernized AK, and if you look at what FB, FSB units are using, it's the, the modernized AKs with the Zenecos attachments. So we'll go with an AK-103 to start. Now, for conversion-wise, I'm going to say an AK-104 would be one of them. It's the same thing as a 103. This would just be a shorter barrel option down to, I believe, it's 12.5 inches is the 104 barrel length. So 12.3 would, or excuse me, the 103 and the 104 would fire the same caliber. However, you would just have a barrel option there to reduce the length of the barrel. Then we go to the 105. The 105 is the same thing as the 104. However, this would be an ammo conversion to 545 by 39 millimeter. And again, different Zeneco for, for or hand guards and butt stocks for all these AKs would make it look beautiful. You see that in a lot of games like Tarkov, Sandstorm, World War III. So it's a time Modern Warfare brings this up. So we have the AK-103, shorter barrel version to the AK-104, ammo conversion, with also a short barrel would be the AK-105 to the 545 by 39 millimeter. Then we'll have another one here being the AK-107. So the AK-107 is one that actually is in COD Mobile as the AK-117. This thing is going to fire the 545 by 39 millimeter round, same as the 105. However, this is going to be a standard 16-inch barrel length, I believe it is, on the 100 series or the 107 series. And this one offers a counterbalance recoil system on it. So it essentially has no recoil and actually has a higher rate of fire, I believe up to 800 rounds per minute over the AK-74 and the AK-103s and things like that. And obviously it fires 5.5 by 39. You do have other versions which fire the 7.62 variant. However, here, with the purpose of this, I think the 100 and 107 with the 5.45 by 39 would be a good conversion. You could have that magazine fixed with a different attachment there with the chassis or the stock option, which fixes it to an AK-107 firing 5.45 by 39 millimeter. The next one here I'm going to throw in, and this could even, you could make an argument, this could be a separate weapon, but this would be, I'm assuming they could make it a stock attachment, and this would change the chassis of the weapon to a bullpup version of the AK, that being the Kochevnik AK. This is typically, you see this used with uh, AK-74 AK M's. You could also obviously use it with AK-105s and 104s, but the Kochevnik is essentially a conversion kit offered by Zeneco and some other third-party third companies to convert this to a bullpup AK, making it a shorter overall length of the weapon and better for CQC engagement. So obviously that would be shorter or around the same length as the AK-105, but again, you have a whole new chassis system. Again, this offers great cosmetics. This could even be a blueprint for the weapon itself, which would be great. So that's our ak 103, 104, 105, 107, and Kochevnik for the first weapons. Next up, we're going to jump into the HK 416A8. So we haven't seen a 416, I believe, in any COD up to this point. So the 416 developed specifically for Delta Forces in, in collaboration with HK and Larry Vickers. This thing was used primarily renowned on the Bin Laden missions back in 2009, I believe it was. So the HK 416A8, this is also going to be, the A8 version is going to be adopted by the German military and a bunch of other militaries here coming up in the next year or two. You could also have a conversion here for the 416A8, which is firing 556 by 45 millimeter NATO. You could have a conversion to give it a longer barrel option and a different, uh, probably it's a little bit minor cosmetic changes, but not much. And that would offer the M27 IAR or the Infantry Automatic Rifle. This is supposed to be a replacement for the M249 saw in the future. We'll see if that actually pans out. But again, just with a longer barrel length on it, you could go from an HK416 to an M27 IAR. And I believe the M27 IAR did make an appearance in Call of Duty Ghosts. So that's not a new weapon for the COD franchise. 
Next up, you could do an ammo conversion for the HK417. So this would convert it, an ammo conversion for 5.56 by 45 millimeter over to 7.62 by 51 millimeter. And again, you could offer a variety of different barrel lengths here to have something. You could even have the DMR variant of this with a longer barrel length and lock it in single fire. Or you could have the standard barrel length or the assaulter version, which would be more of a short barrel version of the HK417. So that would be with one, one ammo conversion. Again, you can get three weapons with this. You could potentially make an argument for more depending on the different barrel length options. But the HK416A8, M27 IAR, and the HK417 with that ammo conversion to 7.62 by 51 millimeter. Next up, we're going to look at the FN Herstel F2000. So this thing was put into service in, I believe it was 2001. This, again, is a bullpup rifle uh, from Belgium. And again, it fires 800 to 900 rounds per minute. Very unique design. I don't believe this has been in any Call of Duty in the past. However, we did see it uh, back in Battlefield 3 and even Battlefield 4. This weapon is a pretty iconic uh, for bullpup rifles. Really aesthetically interesting looking. And again, a high rate of fire makes it a interesting weapon. You could have this just as a base weapon. Minor, uh, minor conversions for this as far as different attachments. Doesn't need to convert to any other weapon. But I think the F2000 by itself would be a nice addition to this game. Next up, we'll look at another bullpup option here, that being the Desert Tech MDR, the DT MDR being the Micro Dynamic Rifle. This is from the company Desert Tech. This is another bullpup version of a rifle firing 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO. It's very modular is really what the design for this is. Modular, again, it's a shorter version, a bullpup rifle. And I, this is kind of was introduced in SHOT Show a few years back and is making quite a noise in the industry lately here in America, a really renowned rifle that has some work to do to come along, but it's definitely one of those weapons that a lot of people are taking notice of. Now, the Desert Tech MDR, we actually saw it featured in key art for Modern Warfare 2019, way back going into release. So there was some key art in that game, especially even on the menus, I believe, for some of the game mode options for Modern Warfare 2019, where one of the soldiers had a Desert Tech MDR. So I was expecting this to be something we would see in Modern Warfare 2019, but I do expect to see it in Modern Warfare 2 later this year in 2022. Now, the conversion for this would be the MDR-308. Again, this would just be a conversion to 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. Simple ammo conversion. Don't need anything else crazy besides that. It's a really nice looking weapon by itself. And again, I think this would be a great addition to the bullpup rifles and offering those two different ammo conversions would be really cool as well. So you have the Desert Tech MDR in 5.56 and in 308. So... That's the MDR. Next up, a weapon that was in Modern Warfare 2019, that being the Tavor 21 or the Ram 7 as it was in Modern Warfare 2019. Tavor 21, again, this is a IWI Israeli assault rifle, 456 by 45 millimeter NATO. We could have a conversion to the Tavor 7, which again is a conversion to 762 by 51 millimeter NATO. Same conversion for the ammos as we just discussed with the Desert Tech MDR and some of the other weapons. So you would go from a Tavor 21 to a Tavor 7, and then you could even have the 9x19 Parabellum ammo conversion to a MTAR with a shorter barrel. You could lock that in with that ammo attachment, so you have the X95 or the MTAR. And again, I believe the MTAR or the X95 did make an appearance in previous Call of Duties. Definitely has been in Battlefield games in the past. But again, this is a good example, another good example of one weapon with... You could have two different ammo conversions here, and you can essentially make three different weapons with this. So the Desert Tech MDR, or excuse me, the Tavor 21, Tavor 7, and the X95, or the MTAR. So three different weapons there. Next up, we're going to look at the Croatian VHS, firing 5.56 by 45 millimeter NATO at a fire rate of 860 rounds per minute. Now... The new iteration of this was introduced in 2013. That is the VHS-2, which is a more modernized version of the VHS. Again, this is actually proving to be a really good bullpup rifle. Another bullpup here, three in a row. But the VHS and the VHS-2, really aesthetically pleasing weapons here. And again, that high rate of fire and the modularity offered of this weapon, I think, is another great addition to Modern Warfare 2, allowing for more variety in the game, and again, it does have a pretty good rate of fire on this. You could obviously balance that with recoil in different points that you would uh, select these type of high rate of fire weapons. Uh, but again, the VHS, the Croatian VHS, and the VHS-2 would be very good additions to this game. I would love to see those. Next up, the French FAMAS. So 
FAMAS, again, another weapon we saw in Call of Duty Modern Warfare is 2019. We could start out with a FAMAS F1. You could also make a conversion to a more modernized look of the weapon to an F2 or the Valor CA or the modernized FAMAS F1 Feline, I believe it's called. And obviously, it would be great to see those those big French bulky optics on this weapon. So the FAMAS, uh, really interesting weapon. I would love to see it with the ability to fire fully automatic. In this case, again, a perk, whether it's a perk or an attachment that locks a few different attachments together so they have to work together, I think is the way you solve a lot of these balance issues, just like we saw with Medal of Honor Warfighter, where you would pick one attachment and it would force you to lock a few attachments together in order to keep it balanced. So that's a good way to balance this. The FAMAS, uh, definitely a weapon I expect to see since it's been in almost every Modern Warfare game, I believe, to date. Next up, the SIG MCX Virtus Patrol. Now, this made an appearance again in Call of Duty 2019 or Modern Warfare 2019 as the M13. The SIG MCX Virtus Patrol, really awesome weapon. High rate of fire, aesthetically looks beautiful. And since we saw it in Modern Warfare 2019, I would expect to see this uh, in the future as well. Offered by Sig Sauer. You have conversions here to the Black Mamba or the LVAW, the Low Visibility Assault Weapon, which again is a weapon that is probably my favorite in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 with that integrally suppressed barrel. You could also have that conversion with a Rattler for a shorter barrel to, I believe it's eight and a half or nine inches. Also offer the ammo conversion to the 300 Blackout. And again, you could fix that with the different barrels so it can't be abused if they're going to if they're going to balance that round correctly. You could also make a conversion here to the MCX MR, which is essentially the designated marksman rifle or the sniper. Uh, it's the was entered into the military's. I want I think it was the SAS um, competition, basically to look for a semi-automatic sniper rifle. Firing 5.56 by 45 millimeter in this case. And I believe it was, I want to say it was beat out by the Mark 12. Uh, but the MCX MR was the entry into that competition. It wasn't selected, obviously. You were able to make a conversion for this really in the uh, Modern Warfare 2019. Um, but it would be good to see the actual, a better conversion for it in Modern Warfare 2, the MCX MR. And then the MPX would be a 9 by 19 millimeter conversion. A few different ammo conversions here. The MPX, I think 9x19 would be the most balanced for this one, offering a good close quarters submachine gun. And I believe the MPX has been in different games in the past, but that weapon does fire a multitude of different calibers, just like the Virtus and the Rattler firing 5x6 and 300 blackouts. So there we're going to cover the SIG MCX Virtus Patrol, the LVAW, the Low Visibility Assault Weapon, the MCX Rattler, the SIG Rattler, the MCX MR, that designated Marsman rifle version, and the MPX for the submachine gun. So, five different weapons thrown in there. Next up, we're going to look at another SIG weapon, that being the NGSW bid by Spear, or by SIG, being the MCX Spear. Now, the NGSW being Next Generation Squad Weapon. This is a program going on to replace the current M4 platform of weapons, and six hours entry is dubbed the Spear. These weapons are all firing. 6.8 by 51 millimeter and six hours spear entry is probably one of two that's going to get picked in the forefront here of the running it's supposed to be decided here shortly i believe sometime early this year they're going to make their decision so six hours mcx spear firing the 6.8 by 51 millimeter round it's that intermediary cartridge between 556 and 762 by 51 and again this thing Aesthetically, it looks semi-similar to an MCX Virtus. However, a little bit different, and this would be, again, a pretty big boy rifle intermediary between those two calibers, but I think this is a must with where we are in current modern times and where this game is going to be. You need to see an NGSW like this. So Six Sour Spear is a definite, and you could have different barrel length for that for the, the Sig Fury, which is a SBR or a short-barreled rifle variant of the Spear firing that same 6.8. By 51 millimeter caliber so that's the sig sour ngsw bid being the spear and the fury with that shorter barrel length next up another ngsw assault weapon here being the general dynamics bid for the NGS ngsw program the rm277 so this is general dynamics bid 
for this uh, NGSW program. This is a bullpup weapon, and again, these this is firing a very. Uh, I want to say it's it's almost like a plastic cartridge, so it's a lighter, light lighter weight overall for the operator who's carrying this. But again, it's still firing that 6.8 by 51 millimeter. There's a lot of benefits to this because it is that intermediary cal caliber that we discussed. But again, this is a bullpup version. And honestly, aesthetically, and it, it looks beautiful. And I prefer the look of the RM277 from General Dynamics over the Sig Spear, at least aesthetically. It has a very nice customized suppressor. You could put NGSW type optics on these weapons to make them very unique versus the other weapons uh, that we've already discussed. So these could be fixed with specific optics like the NGSW optics from Leopold, etc., to make these weapons very unique. And again, with that intermediary caliber would serve a very particular purpose in the game. I think it would be very, very cool to see. Next up, we're going to move on to the AS Val. So this is again, another weapon we saw in Modern Warfare 2019, the AS Val firing that nine by 39 millimeter Cartridge, it's a big boy bullet, basically the 300 blackout to the 762 by 39 Russian cartridge. And this thing is meant to essentially penetrate through armor. Uh, you also have a conversion here for the VSS, which again, we saw a conversion for that in Modern Warfare 2019 to the special sniper rifle and the SR3, which would just be a shorter barrel length and a slightly cosmetic change to the weapon. But the 9x39 cartridge, you could have a few different ammo conversions here based on not the converting the caliber but the type of round and this is something i think we'll see given where vanguard went uh with that with the different types of bullets you can see i think different kinds kind instead of incendiary length and things like that i think you'll have different round choices so for example 9 by 39 millimeter sp5 9 by 39 millimeter sp6 9 by 39 spp those are all different types of rounds some are made for higher penetration some are made for uh greater penetration than the SP-6 being the SPP, which we saw in Modern Warfare 2019. These, again, could be specific to how you're going to run the weapon. The AS Val and the VSS could both have a capability, or the VSS, the, excuse me, the AS Val could have the capability for SP-5 and SP-6. The VSS could have the ability for only SPP or SP-6. And then the SR-3 could be maybe just say SP-5 to keep it fair and balanced. But those are three weapons that I think would be great in this game. And again, like we just talked about the type of bullet itself, not not things like incendiary or lengthened or any of that garbage, having the actual real life bullet itself. Like I said, SP5, SP6, SPP. There's a bunch of different ones here. I think you can make an argument for, and that would be what I would like to see for these weapons for the gunsmithing. So the ASVAL, VSS, SR3, definitely musts in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Moving on here, we're going to be covering the AK-12. So finally, you guys probably knew this was coming. The AK-12 is a weapon I'm shocked we never saw in Modern Warfare 2019. However, the AK-12 is what co-won the Ratnik Trials back in, I think this decision was in 2014, I want to say. This is going to be the new general purpose or the standard issue weapon for the Russian military. Here going forward, AK-12 is the modernized AK-74M platform. Comes fully equipped with new butt stocks, uh, rail dust covers, Picatinny rails on the handguard, etc. Very similar to the 74M, however, uh, much more modernized and modular for the operator. And again, they could balance this by having it have maybe a slightly increased rate of fire better ergonomics, things like that for better mobility would be great. Now you could have a conversion here for the RPK-16, which is the light machine gun version of the AK-12 platform with a 95 round drum, or it can also take standard AK-12 magazines. This would just be a longer barrel with a slightly different looking handguard, and you'd have an RPK-16 from the AK-12. Now you could throw in the AK-15 with the 7.62 by 39 millimeter attachment there, but I think if we're already having an a AK-103 platform in the game, it doesn't make sense to have another 7.62x39 from an AK platform. So I would say keep the AK-12 at 545x39mm and only allow the AK-12 and the RPK-16. You could also do shorter barrel versions to have the counterparts to the 105 and things like that. The short barrel versions are at 12.4 inches. But if, again, if we're having the, the AK-105 and things like that, I don't think it's worth having those in the game for attachments for the AK-12 if you already have them for the 103, which we talked about. 
Next up, we're going to look at the AEK-971. Again, this is a Russian assault rifle with, again, a very similar Connell Balance recoil system that we saw or discussed with the AK-107 series of weapons with the 107, 108, 109 earlier in the video. Very high rate of fire at a little bit over 900 rounds per minute. The AEK-971, and then you have a conversion here, whether it's a blueprint, different chassis system, or whatever you want for the stock conversion to an A545. Now, the A545 is the modernized version of the AEK-971. When I, when I said the AK-12 co-won the Ratnik Trials in 2014, the other winner of this was the A545. Now, the AK-12 won the primary bit, but the A545 was adopted for special purpose use, so it will see service within special units. And again, the A545 is the modernized version of the AEK-971 with that high rate of fire of over 900 rounds per minute and firing that 545 by 39 millimeter Russian round. Next up, another Russian rifle here being the AN-94 Abakan. We saw this in Modern Warfare 2019. Again, 545 by 39 millimeter, but this has that hyperburst as well as a uh, not the same type of recoil system as the AEK, but semi-similar in the hyperburst. Again, you're shooting two rounds before you even feel the recoil of the one. So this is really a special purpose rifle, but again, I think it has a place in this game amongst all the other Russian ARs with the same caliber. It would be good to see this one make an appearance and again, only make it work basically the same it does in 2019's Modern Warfare is really to take advantage of that hyperburst option before it drops off to drastically slow rates of fire. So you're having more variety here with similar performance versus some other weapons. Next up, we're going to look at the Mark 17 or the Scar H firing 7.62 by 51 millimeter NATO. Now, again, we saw this in Modern Warfare 2019. Here, we're going to have a conversion to the Mark 16, which is that 5.56 by 45 millimeter conversion from the 7.62 by 51, giving us the Mark 16 or the Scar Light. We'll also have a the same conversion in Modern Warfare 2019 to the Mark 20. SSR or the Sp Special Sniper Rifle, firing 72 by 51, so the base ammo of the SCAR. However, here you would offer the 20 inch barrel length and the same buttstock options we saw in Modern Warfare 2019. Bipods, etc. Would be great to see the Mark 20 SSR make another appearance. And again, with that barrel length, the way I think you balance is different from Modern Warfare 2019 with a couple of these conversions where you're doing uh, different totally different weapons like we're turning this into a dmr out of an assault rifle and the way i think you balance that is by locking the barrel length into the semi-automatic or the single fire and also maybe locking you into an ammo type or a bullet type that being in this case could be the m80 round of the 762 by 51 which is basically the best penetration round you're going to get for the 762 by 51 millimeter so the m80 versus maybe like m62 for the other other types of versions we had here but that's i think how you balance that a little bit offer some exceptions there but again good to see it would be really good to see that and then you could throw on shorter barrel versions or shorter barrel attachments so you can make this mark 16 cqc and the mark 17 cqc which again close quarters versions of those weapons so we here we have the mark 17 or the scar h we have the SCAR Light with the ammo conversion of 5.56. We have the longer barrel DMR special sniper rifle version with the Mark 20. And then the short barrel CQCs of the Mark 16 and the Mark 17. Next up, the M4A1. So again, another returning weapon here. This is kind of a given. We need to see this in Modern Warfare 2. Conversions would be very similar to Modern Warfare 2019 with a M16A4 barrel. You could also have the Daniel Defense M4 Block 2, which again, just a more modernized, think of it as a more modernized version of the salt mod kits produced by Daniel Defense. So this would mainly be, could be a blueprint or a, a uh, different, I think a blueprint would be the best option here. Then you have the Sailor Arms Industries Gray Rifle. This was a blueprint for the weapon in Modern Warfare 2019. Again, I think you can make an argument to have a barrel option, multiple different barrel options like this, which would serve semi-different purposes, but wouldn't change the stats of the weapon too much. So again, you could do it as a blueprint, or you could just make very slight differences and offer these types of different cosmetic barrel lengths. 
Next up, the worst port industries LVOA would be another conversion. Again, this would be a different type of barrel and handguard option for the weapon. You could definitely do this as a blueprint, or you again, you could make very similar or minor different weapon statistic changes with these types of attachments. And that would be the worst part industries LVOAC. Very unique, unique, distinctive handguard that goes around the tip of the barrel. Has different uh, like zip ties and um, bungee cord almost in there to for cable management on those weapons. Very, very aesthetically pleasing looking. It. It's just one of those weapons you look at and it just looks beautiful. So I'd love to see that make an appearance. Mark 18 CQBR or the Close Quarters Battle Rifle would be a great one. Again, another conversion. We saw this in Modern Warfare 2019. This would just be, again, a simple barrel length change down to a shorter barrel for the Mark 18 CQBR. Next up would be a longer barrel fixed with a better bullet type. So probably something like an M95 here. for the, If we look at different caliber or types of rounds for this 5.56, first off, we would have something like M855, M855A1, uh, M95, or M995, I believe it is, and some others in there. But again, for the this next one, you can lock it into M995. Longer barrel option and single fire would be the Mark 12 SPR, or the Special Purpose Rifle. This is a DMR conversion, 45.56 by 45 millimeter. However, it is a DMR, so it should pack higher velocity and pack a higher punch than the standard full auto versions of the M4. And then last but not least, the Mark 11 or the Knights Armament Company SR25 conversion. This would be an ammo conversion. In this case, unlike Modern Warfare 2019, not the 458 SOCOM, but the 762 by 51 you'd have the same different attachments for the Mark 12, but minor different cosmetic changes. You'd lock the single fire around the single fire of the 762 by 51 into that fixed barrel length and allow it to only serve as a single fire weapon. And again, that's your SR25 fixing it like that so you can't abuse these types of attachments. So for the M4, we have the M4A1, M16A4, Daniel Defense, M4 Block 2, Sailor Arms Industries Gray Rifle, War Sport Industries LVOAC or the LVOA. We have the Mark 18 CQBR, the Mark 12 SPR, and the Mark 11 or the SR25. Next up is going to be the CMMG Mark 47 Mutant. This is a AR-10 platform, so it's think, think basically like an M4, M16 platform, but firing the Russian 762 by 51 millimeter. So this thing does take AK mags. It's very similar almost to like the, uh, to the Galil Ace in some respect, or in the game it was the Amax. However, this is essentially, basically just think of it, almost as like an M16, but firing Russian 7.62 rounds. And obviously there's some cosmetic differences there, the hand guards, things like that. It looks different, but it is a nice weapon to have. And again, it would just op offer, you could have different ergonomics on this versus some of the other weapons with a similar caliber. And you wouldn't have to have that many crazy conversions to it because it is going to be stuck with, I think, sticking this thing with the 7.62 by 39 millimeter Russian round for the mutant makes most sense. And again, just another one of those variety type weapons where you have weapons with the same caliber, but this one not only cosmetically is much different, you could have minor different performance stats to benefit this or or keep it very similar to something like an AK-103 or these other weapons that fire the same round. Next up, the G36K or KERS. Now, again, the G36, we saw this in Modern Warfare 2019 as the Holger or the MG36. So in this case, I think we need a proper assault rifle version. The Holger just was very disappointing with the assault rifle conversion, the way it performed. And I'm not sure if that's just because it was locked with LMG type stats. The conversion itself didn't really make it an accurate rifle like it is in real life. Um, made it really unreliable and not that fun to use unless you're in certain situations. So starting it as an assault rifle with the G36K, you could have a short barrel version of the G36C. Then you could have a, the longer barrel version of the G36 with an ammo conversion allowing for a 100 round CMAG for the MG36. And then you would have a ammo conversion to make it into the sniper rifle version of the G36, that being the SLR. And then last but not least, a whole chassis change for this weapon. So you have a buttstock option, which is going to change the cosmetics completely of the weapon. This could even be a blueprint if you really wanted to. That being the HK XM8. So the XM8 almost 
won out the bids in the early 2000s to replace the M4. However, due to mainly political reasons, it ended up not being chosen. They stuck with the M4, but the XM8 essentially internally is the exact same weapon as the G36 minus the, the internal parts are a little bit different size, but internally it is a G36. Cosmetically on the outside, it's a much different looking weapon. However, having a conversion, whether it's a stock option for the chassis, turning this into an XM8 or a blueprint is kind of a no-brainer if you're going to have a G36 in the game. So you can have at minimum six weapons here, that being the G36K, short barrel of the G36C. And again, these are all firing 5x6x45 millimeter NATO. Standard long barrel G36. Standard long barrel with a 100 round CMAG MG36. Ammo conversion, fix it as a designated marksman sniper rifle to the SLR. That would be an ammo conversion change. Same conversion we talked about. Lock the, lock the longer barrel, lock it in single fire so it is forced to perform in a certain way. And then, again, a chassis change or a blueprint to the HK XM8 would be awesome to see in Modern Warfare 2. Next up, the IWI Ace Gen 2. So we saw the Ace in Modern Warfare 2019 as the CR-56 AMAX. However, this was the Gen 1. Very ugly looking weapon, in my opinion. And it, the fact that it was overpowered just made me despise this. However... Something I would have used would be the Gen 2 version of this. So this is, comes with some minor changes, but mainly cosmetically we're looking at the handguard being going from that ugly looking handguard that the Gen 1 had to an M-Lock handguard, making this thing much more aesthetically appealing and modernized looking. Whereas the CR-56 AMAX just kind of looked very old and ugly in Modern Warfare 2019. If it, looked, if it looked like the Gen 2, it's something I definitely would have used, but... They didn't go that way, and I was surprised we never saw a blueprint or a, a different barrel conversion down the road to turn it into a Gen 2. So the IWI Ace Gen 2 with that M-Lock barrel, basically the same weapon we saw. It could fire multiple different calibers here. You can have multiple conversions. can fire also the 7.62 by 39 millimeter like we saw in Modern Warfare 2019. You can have ammo conversions for 7.62 by 51, 5.56 by 45, or even 5.45 by 39 Russian round as well. So... A lot of different possibilities with this. I think it makes most sense to have the Ace Gen 2 version with that M-Lock because it is the most modern iteration of this weapon. Next up, the SIG 5.53, or as you may know it, the Growl 5.56 from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Again, this is just a really, really cool gun. Again, one of those weapons that I think was overpowered for far too long in Modern Warfare 2019. However, it is a nice weapon. It is a more modern weapon, and it would be nice to see this make another appearance in Modern Warfare 2. Next up, the CZ Bren 805. This would be a really good weapon here to see in the game. This weapon has been around uh, in a couple different iterations here. And now this this actually is a Czech Republic weapon. So the CZ Bren, it, it fills a couple different roles here. That being a carbine, an assault rifle, a DMR, and a battle rifle. You could also have a conversion CZ, the Bren 807, and the Bren 2 is a more modernized, upgraded version of this weapon. Now, all in all, these can fire 5.56x45, 7.62x39, and 7.62x51. So the CZ Bren 805 with the conversions to make it a little bit more modernized with the Z CZ Bren 2 and allow those ammo conversions with different barrel length would be a really nice weapon to see. Again, this is a really aesthetically pleasing weapon. Looks kind of similar to like an, a an ACR or even a SCAR light in my opinion. But again, a really nice weapon to see and it's something I would like to see in Modern Warfare 2. Next up would be the the failed to be adopted HK433 or the Kilo 141. Now this thing was supposed to replace the G36 for the German military. However, due to some issues with the weapon and I believe the cost and just a number of other different things, it is no longer going to replace the G36. German military is going to be going with the HK 416A8 instead. However, the HK433 not really sure what the state of this weapon is currently, but it was a Modern Warfare 2019. It would be cool to see it come back on Modern Warfare 2. And there was there was proposed different ammo conversions for this weapon in real life for like an HK-123, uh, different things like that to convert it to 762s, uh, different Russian rounds. So you could do something like that. But again, the HK-433 or the Kilo-141 would be a nice one to see back in the game. And now last but not least would be the Ash-12 or the Shock-12. Now this is a... Another Russian, this is a Russian bullpup rifle designed specifically for the FSB for close quarters urban combat. This fire is a big boy, 50 caliber round, that being the 
by 55 millimeter. And this thing is a good example of also you could have fixed different options with this weapon with different bullet types. So there's different rounds that are fired with this. Some are for armor penetration, some are for getting more distance on the weapon, things like that. So basically this weapon is built to punch through walls and body armor at close quarters for the FSB. And with this, you can make the conversion again, like we saw in Modern Warfare 2019, to the VKS. And to do this, you would give it a uh, different fixed barrel length, which would turn it into only single fire, and then a different round type, which would be for increased penetration. Same with like the VSS for the SP6 or the SPP rounds. This would be fixed to single fire and would perform more like a sniper rifle. And in this case, the VKS in real life is a bolt action so you really need to instead of there's not an actual bolt you just need to pull the charge handle each time so a conversion to that would fix it like that so it can only be fired in single fire you have to charge it each time it would perform more so like a sniper rifle uh, and again it does have that very long suppressor that could be fixed on it same as we saw in modern warfare 2019 and for the shock 12 version you could swap out the suppressor same as same ones we saw in modern warfare 2019 but to have that in the, in the game is kind of a given to me. That thing is so fun to use. It's a really iconic weapon, I think, for Modern Warfare 2019. And the conversions for it uh, are, are really good if they do it right and fix it into a VKS configuration where you need to pull the bolt back every time. So those are all of our weapons. We went through quite a list here. Um, if you guys like the list, go ahead and drop a like. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think of it. This is, was a pain to edit all this and go through and get all the pictures for you guys and just even record this. I did this all in one go, talking through all this. We'll have part two of this, and in part two coming up, the next video in the next day or so, hopefully, I'll be starting with the LMGs and hopefully into the SMGs. And then the part four, part three will most likely be sniper rifles, shotguns, pistols, etc. But we'll see how that works out with the amount of weapons we have here. Now, again, I just want to reiterate, I think variety and the number of weapons is king here. For this Modern Warfare 2 game, to have this game into a live service to continue for a long period of time, I think is almost a given. So let me know what you guys think down below. Till next time, this is Buckner Gaming, out.